Hello and welcome to the Chem Lab. <clears throat> Today we're going to work on Lavoisier's law of conservation of mass. We're going to perform two chemical reactions today and which um, we're going to try to demonstrate this law. Uh, essentially we have three um, objectives here. Um, this will be to make a qualitative, well first, um, evidence of chemical reactions. So there are four signs of chemical reactions as we've studied change of color, um, change of energy, so either getting cold, getting hot, release of a gas, or production of a precipitate. Um, the second goal is going to be to make quantitative measurements um, and a closed and an open system. And through that we hope to um, gather a deeper understanding of chemical reactions and also uh, the energy that is associated uh, with chemical reactions. It's going to be an introduction to uh, thermochemistry at the same time, which is what we're going to look at next. So the first thing that we're going to do is perform the chemical reaction in the closed system. This is reaction number one. Um, and we're going to follow the procedure here. We need to <clears throat> obtain approximately four grams of sodium bicarbonate, and we need to record that exact measurement. So we're gonna uh, zero out the weighing boat here, and we're going to get four grams, approximately, of sodium bicarbonate. Four point zero eight. We're going to note that in our data table. In a second weighing boat, we're going to measure approximately two grams of calcium chloride. Two point zero five, and we're going to put that aside. The next step in the lab is to measure um, 10 milliliters of phenol red. So we're going to carefully measure 10 milliliters of phenol red into a graduated cylinder. And we're going to pour the phenol red into a test tube. And now we're going to weigh the phenol red and um, the test tube. So to do that, we're going to use a beaker as a stand. We're going to zero out the beaker. and then we're gonna record the mass of the phenol red and the test tube, so 2924. We're gonna put this down on our uh, data table. And lastly, we're gonna weigh a Ziploc bag. And we're also gonna record this measurement in uh, the data table so at 612. After three minutes, we measure the weight of the whole system. So this is the weight of the bag, the test tube, the phenol red, two powders. Of course, they've now reacted. Um, and so we get 41.17. So all of this information is going to go here on our data table. Now we see 
this chemical reaction, um, well, if you recall at the very beginning, um, we, the bag, well, it's still cold. Um, and we were also careful to squeeze out all of the air out of the bag. Now it's um, we now have all of the information that we need uh, to complete part one, and you see why it was important. Um, to do this uh, chemical reaction in the closed system. So you wanna make sure that you think about, um, think about that as it is one of the questions on your lab. Also, after the reaction, um, the mass was 41.17, and now it is down to 41.09. Um, this is something to keep in mind um, about what's happening here in the chemical reaction. And, well, despite our best attempts to make a closed system, <laughs> seems that we weren't entirely successful at that. But it was a lot easier to explain uh, why the mass went down. Um, also thinking back about our weighing boats where we originally weighed the chemicals. And if we look carefully at this here. Again, it is um, a lot easier to explain how the mass would go down not so easy to explain an increase in mass. Let's move on to part two of this, of this lab. So we're now um, ready to do the chemical reaction. So this chemical reaction is gonna be done in the Ziploc bag, and this will be our closed system. A closed system is where there's no exchanges that are possible between the chemical reaction and the environment. And we're gonna put are measured chemicals in there. Now we're going to notice here, this might be important later. So both powders go in here, the sodium bicarbonate and the calcium chloride. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add test tube containing the phenol red and we're going to make sure that we don't tip this over right and we're going to very carefully seal the bag we're going to try to get as much of the air out of it as we can okay and again this is very important to make sure that the bag is completely sealed And now we're gonna perform the chemical reaction inside the bag. So nothing can come out and nothing gets in. Hopefully. Seeing some signs of chemical reactions here. The bag does get cold. So at this point, we would make our, our observations about the four signs of chemical reactions, and we would do that over the next um, three minutes.
in part two of the lab, or so reaction number two, we're going to make a chrome yellow pigment, paint pigment. This is a precipitate. So a precipitate is a substance that, that um, is a solid that forms as a product of a chemical reaction and it is insoluble. So we will uh, we will mix two solutions. We will prepare, prepare two solutions. We will mix them. A precipitate will be produced and we will filter the precipitate and recover the dry precipitate on day two. The first part, um, we need a weighed 50 milliliter beaker. So we're going to weigh this beaker and record the mass in our data table. Then what we're going to do is um, weigh 0 0.2 grams of the potassium chromate and we're going to add that to the beaker. So 0 0.2 grams. Point 21, we're going to record that in the data table. In a second container, which we don't need to, to weigh because the chemical reaction will be done in the first beaker. So we need um, to measure out carefully uh, 0 0.3 grams of the lead nitrate. Point 28, and we're going to record that in the data table. After pouring uh, carefully measured 10 milliliters of water in each, uh, we stir until both our both solids are completely dissolved, and we have clear solutions with no uh, no undissolved solid in in either, so that the whole all of the chemicals then um, can react. And we're going to perform the chemical reaction in the weighed beaker, right? This is the one that we know the weight of. And so we're gonna pour And again, I'm going to show you some right here. Give us something to talk about in our conclusion. <laughs> so the chrome yellow precipitate, um, again, is a solid that was created out of the chemical reaction out of mixing uh, two solutions together. The solid is um, insoluble, right? does not dissolve. And so now we're going to let it um, settle and we will use the suction filtration um, setup that we have here, the Buckner filtration. So all we do here is uh, we have a piece of um, filter paper in here. So we need the weight of of this filter paper. And we're going to record uh, the weight in the data table. So the suction hose is to the side of the water faucet. And we'll 
wet to seal the paper. And we're going to pour the content in here. And we will use um, a little bit more water, rinse the beaker to make sure that we have all of our precipitate. have left to do is to remove the filter paper from the funnel. We will put the filter paper on a watch glass and we're going to let it dry overnight. And now that our filter paper and the precipitate are dry, we can finish up the lab by recording this 0 0.54 grams in our data table. And that would be the mass of the precipitate and the mass of the filter paper. Now for the final analysis, um, so this was the chemical reaction that we, that we did. We put in the potassium chromate, we had 0.21 grams of that and 0.28 grams of the lead nitrate. For the sake of this conversation here, the mass of the water is not important because it wasn't um, taking place or it didn't have any part in the chemical reaction. It was just allowing the chemicals to react. So um, both the potassium chromate and the lead nitrate were aqueous, dissolved in water. We produced the precipitate, the chrome yellow precipitate, so the lead chromate, which we can find the mass of the precipitate here because we know that this 0 0.54 grams, um, 0.32 grams of it is the filter paper. So that needs to be subtracted from the 0 0.54 to give us the mass of the precipitate alone. Once we have the mass of the precipitate alone, you will be able to calculate the mass of the potassium nitrate that you produced. We did not measure the mass of the potassium nitrate because it is aqueous, and so when we filtered, it went through with the water. So we couldn't weigh this, but we can certainly calculate it because you know that the mass of the reactants is equal to the mass of the products. Using this information, you can complete the lab and I wish you success. I hope you understand the processes that are, uh, both reactions that are involved and that you also understand why this chemical reaction did not need to be uh, performed in, in, an, in a closed system like reaction number one, right? which reaction one produced a gas, and if we don't close the system, the gas is going to escape. And of course, the mass of the products would seem like it would be less than the mass of the reactants because we wouldn't have um, been able to measure the mass of all of the products, but in this case, there's no gases being evolved. Um, there's no gas being, um, ox nothing comes in from the environment and nothing goes out into the environment. And so therefore, an open system is, is adequate for this, um, for this reaction. Thanks for listening. Good luck and have a great day. Thank you.